Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Walking Through the Book of Exodus. I'm your host, Rewell Barksdale, and today we'll be looking at the 19th chapter of this phenomenal book. So get your paper, get your pencil, get iPad, get your technological devices, get your Bible. And today we're going to walk through the book of the 19th chapter, rather, of the book of Exodus. The subject for tonight would be, are you prepared to meet him? Are you prepared to meet him? Now, listen, if you like what you're hearing on these uh, podcasts, please hit share. And you can go to Ruel Barksdale at 2515 and get the whole book of Genesis. And now we're almost halfway through the book of Exodus on YouTube. Go to my YouTube channel, Ruel Barksdale at 2515 and you can get the entire book of Genesis which we did last year and every book that we've studied so far this year in the book of Exodus. Now as we always do let's set some foundational um, vocabulary and scripture for what we're going to be looking at tonight. I'd like you to understand the word covenant. The word covenant is, is simply a, a promise between two parties. Now, there are two types of covenants or two kinds of contracts, two types of agreements. Uh, the one is a bilateral contract where each party agrees to do something. You do this and I'll do that. You pay me $100 and I'll write that paper for you. That's a bilateral contract. And another is a contract of adhesion where one party says, I'm going to do this. You don't have to do anything. This is my promise. This is my agreement. I'm going to do this. When, when God promised that he would never destroy the earth again by water, that was a contract of adhesion. There was nothing that mankind, humankind had to do to that. God said, this is my word. This is going to happen. This is, this is what will be our agreement. And there's nothing you have to do about it. Nothing you can do to deserve this. This is what I'm going to do. That's the contract of adhesion. But a bilateral contract says each party has to do something. And we're going to see the covenant that God starts to bring forth in the 19th chapter. That's a, that's a bilateral contract. Both parties are expected to do something. Uh, we're going to see a, a follow-up of what we studied last week when we said before God starts a thing, he's already finished it. And to give you evidence of that, I'm going to take you back to Exodus, the third chapter uh, verse 12, I believe, Exodus, the third chapter, verse 12. And Mo and God is having a conversation with Moses. And Moses had spent a lot of time trying to convince God, look, you, you didn't call the wrong one. I'm sure you got the wrong number. I can't talk. I'm, I'm tongue-tied and, and I'm a murderer and, and I'm, a, I'm a conflict. I'm, I'm a fugitive. And, and Pharaoh's not, why would Pharaoh listen to me? The, 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 the people of Israel won't even listen to me. And God says, look, I didn't look at your resume when I called you. But to tell you that I've already finished the thing before I started it, this is what I want you to understand. And God said, I will be with you. And this will be a sign um, to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. What mountain are they at? They're at Mount Sinai. They're at the place where God told Moses, take off your shoes. This is holy ground. They're at the place where God would commission Moses to do what he wanted him to do, to be what he wanted him to be. And Moses has doubts. Moses has fears. So God tells him again, I will be with you. And this will be of the sign to you that it is I who have sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God right here in this place. You're going to bring two, over two million people right here, Moses. And when you get there, I know they're in bondage now. I know they're in slavery now. I know they've been there for 400 years, but I'm telling you, I've already finished this thing. And, and when you get to this place with over two million people, you'll know then that it is I that sent you. All right, now. Let's go to chapter 19 of the book of Exodus, uh, chapter 19, and let's see what God has to say for us tonight. And my question for you tonight is, have you prepared to meet him? Did you prepare? Did you get ready? You know, if you were going to meet the governor, if you were going to meet the president, if you were going to meet the, 
the uh, CEO of your organization, you get ready. You study some. You you would put your best outfit on. You you would um, think about what you wanted to say. You think about the conversation. You wouldn't just haphazardly walk into the office. Have you prepared to meet God? All right, let's read uh, uh, Exodus nineteenth chapter verse one. In the third month after Isra- the Israelites left Egypt. On the very day they came to the desert of Sinai, after they set out from Rephidim, they entered the desert of Sinai, and the Israel camped there in the desert in front of the mountain, just like God told Moses way back in the third chapter. We're chapter 19 now. Way back in the third chapter, God said, look, when this happens, then you'll know, then you'll believe, then maybe you'll trust that I, in fact, sent you. Then Moses went up to God. And the Lord called to him from the mountain and said, This is what you are to say to the house of Jacob. They didn't call him the house of Abraham. They didn't call them the house of Isaac. They didn't call him the house of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Jacob being the weakest of the three patriarchs, they weren't strong enough yet to be the house of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Then Moses went up to God and the Lord called him from the mountain and said, This is what you should say to the house of Jacob and what you are to tell the people of Israel. You yourselves have seen what I did to Egypt and how I carried you on eagles' wings. I I didn't put you in my hands. I put you on my wings. As though anything that would harm you would have to come through my wings first. And God takes the time to remind them, "I, I brought you out of Egypt. I, I, I carried you through the Red Sea. I, I, I made sure that Pharaoh and his army got drowned in the sea. I, I, I fed you in the wilderness. I, I gave you manna from heaven. I, I've been good. I brought water from the rock. I've already done. And sometimes we've got to remember what God has already done for us. Yeah, I understand that we, we've got something in front of us right now. We're praying for a deliverance for tomorrow. We're praying for that job. We're, we're praying for that promotion. We're praying for our health. We're praying for our relationship. But God is, if somebody said, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah, praise God for saving me. And so at this moment in time, God is reminding them, look, this is what I've already done for you. I've been your deliverer. I've been your way maker. I've been your protector. I carried you out on weagles and weagles, eagles wings and and brought you to myself. Sometimes we sing songs that really don't make sense. Song I searched until I found him. He wasn't lost. He got you and he brought you unto himself. If he hadn't called you, you'd still be out in your mess. Now, if you obey me, now this is the con- the bilateral contract. There's there's an if here. I brought you to myself. Now, 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 if you obey me fully, and keep my covenant, keep my promise, keep my contract. There's going to be three parts of the uh, covenant. There's going to be the law. There's going to be sacrifices. There's going to be choices. If you keep my covenant fully. Then out of all the nations, you will be my treasured possession. Hmm. Out of every living thing on earth, you will be my treasured possession. Then out of, um, although the whole earth is mine, you will be for me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you are to speak to the Israelites, Moses. Go tell them what I said. So Moses went back and summoned the elders of the people and set before them all the words the Lord had commanded him to speak. The people all responded together. We will do everything the Lord has said. I I, I know that we we grumbled and when we thought there was no food and you gave us manna from on high. I, I, I know that we grumbled when we thought there was no water. You, you struck, the, struck the rock and, and water came out. I, I know that we, we said we should have been left in Egypt because at least we had three hots in the cot. I, I know, but, but now we're going to do everything that, that, that God has told us to do. So Moses brought their answer back to the Lord. The Lord said to Moses, I am going to come to you in a dense cloud. So that the people will hear me speaking. They'll hear me speaking with you Moses. And will always now put their trust in you. I see it's been a rocky relationship. 
I see they've doubted you. But when they hear my voice, sometimes we, we, we've got to make sure that people hear the voice of God and not our voice. Sometimes we've got to see, we've got to make sure that people see God and not us. Because when they hear our voice, when they see us, then they'll doubt. But when we can allow them, we can somehow put them before the face of God and allow them to hear the voice of God and, and, and the, the, the will, the, the way, and the word of God. That's when we get faith. That's when we get trust. Then Moses told the Lord what the people said. And the Lord said to Moses, go and the people, go, go to the people. Go to the people and consecrate them today. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day. They couldn't just come up to God any old way. They couldn't just come up to God dirty and smelly and, and unprepared. No, they had to go wash your clothes. Consecrate yourself. And be ready by the third day, because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai. There's a beautiful thing about the third day, my brothers and sisters, because God was going to show himself on the third day. God was going to introduce the covenant on the third day. It makes me think about another third day, not in the Old Testament, but in the New Testament, not at Mount Sinai, but Mount Zion. Oh, y'all know it as the city of Jerusalem, where there wasn't fear and, and trembling, but there was love and, and tenderness. Uh, the, 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 the word wasn't just given to Moses, but it was given for all of us. It wasn't given in the wilderness, but it was given by a loving God. Mount Zion is where another third day happens and God reveals himself again. And this is a new covenant and a new people. Hmm. But let's see how God tells the old covenant, the the old contract, the old promise. Let's see how God has his people prepare to receive what he was. See, when we get to the next chapter, when we get to chapter 20, we're going to get the we're going to get the Ten Commandments. But they got to be prepared first. The Lord said to Moses, I'm going to come to you in a dense cloud so that the people will hear me speaking with you and will always put their trust in you. Then Moses told the Lord what the people had said. And the Lord said to Moses, go to the people and consecrate them today and tomorrow. Have them wash their clothes and be ready by the third day. Because on that day, the Lord will come down on Mount Sinai in the sight of all the people. Put limits on the people or put limits on the people around the mountain and tell them, tell them, tell them, Moses, be careful that you do not go up to the mountain or touch it or touch the foot of it. Whoever touches the mountain shall surely be put to death. He shall be stoned or shot with arrows. Not a hand is to be laid on them. Whether man or animal, he shall not be permitted to live. I'm a holy God. You can't come so close to me. And as close as you come, you better prepare yourself first. Don't come to me casually. Don't come to me haphazardly. Don't come to me dirty. Wash yourself. Consecrate yourself. And don't come but so far. Only when the ram's horn sounds a long blast, may they go up to the mountain. After Moses had gone down the mountain to the people, he consecrated them and they washed their clothes. Then he said to the people, look, we, the, God is going to meet us here. So you, you've got to prepare yourselves for the third day. Abstain from sexual relations. On the morning of the third day, there was thunder and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain. And a very loud, who blew the trumpet? Reminded of the scripture in the, old, in the New Testament says, one day there's going to be a trumpet that sounds. Who's blowing the trumpet here? It wasn't Moses, it wasn't Aaron, it wasn't from the crowd. This was a trumpet from heaven. On the morning of the third day, there was a thunder and, and lightning with a thick cloud over the mountain and a very loud trumpet blast. Everyone in the camp trembled. Then Moses led the people out of the camp to meet with the Lord, to meet God. And they stood at the foot of the mountain. Mount Sinai was covered with smoke because the Lord descended on. He had to descend. You know, you, you got to be high and lifted up to descend to the top of the mountain, not to ascend. He descended to the top of the mountain. 
The smoke billowed up from it like smoke from a furnace. The whole mountain trembled violently, and the sound of the trumpet grew louder and louder. Then Moses spoke, and the voice of God answered him. The Lord descended to the top of the Mount Sinai and called Moses to the top of the mountain. So Moses went up. God's going down. Moses is going up. And the Lord said to him, Go down and warn the people so they do not force their way through to see the Lord. And many of them perish. Even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. See, sometimes I think we've gotten too casual in how we approach God. We've gotten too casual in our relationship with God. We've gotten too casual of how we approach Bible study. We've gotten too too familiar with how we even bless our food. We say it, but do we think about what we're saying? Do we really want God to bless our... We've gotten too casual in our daily conversations. We've gotten too casual in our daily devotion. We've gotten too casual in how we go to Bible study, how we go to church, how we go to Sunday school. God says, when you come before me, you, you, you've got to prepare. You've got to consecrate yourself. You've got to wash your clothes. You've got to have clean hands. Go down and, and, and warn the people so they do not force their way through to see the Lord and many of them perish. Even many, even the priests who approach the Lord must consecrate themselves or the Lord will break out against them. Moses said to the Lord, the people cannot come up Mount Sinai because you yourself warned us. Put limits around the mountain and set it apart as holy. The Lord replied, go down and bring Aaron up with you. But the priest and the people must not force their way through to come up to the Lord or he will break out against them. So Moses went down and the people told and the people and Moses went down to the people and he told them. My question tonight is, are you ready to meet God? I believe that God has a special plan, a special purpose and a special mountain for each of us. I believe that God has a promise for you in your life. I believe that God wants to be in relationship with you. But we have, to, we, we have to prepare. We have to understand that God is a God that has boundaries, that has expectations, and has a holiness that he expects us to adhere to. Are you prepared to meet him? Are you prepared to serve him? Are you prepared and desirous to worship him? Listen, this has been Ruel Barksdale. This has been chapter 19. Next week, woo, we're going to look at chapter 20. And we're going to look at the Ten Commandments. And even to this day, the Ten Commandments create the foundation for the law. Both civil and criminal law go back to the Ten Commandments. We'll break the Ten Commandments into its various parts. The parts that deal with relationship with God. The parts that deal with relationship with your brother and your sister here on earth i love you i do but god loves you more until next week tell a friend tell an enemy and remember ruel barksdale at 25 15 at on youtube will give you the entire catalog of our study through exodus and will give you every chapter of last year's walk through the book of genesis until next week i'll see you have a great day bye-bye